neighborhood of x, a real number, of radius epsilon is defined as the set of y in r such that the distance that y is from x is made less than epsilon. So on a number line, that would look something like this. We'll take a point x, located right there, and then we will go out epsilon to the right and epsilon to the left and make an interval. So it's the set of x, or set of y's that are in that interval because you go epsilon to the right and epsilon to the left. So effectively a neighborhood looks like an open interval in R. Now a deleted neighborhood of x and R of radius epsilon is defined as the set of y in R such that the distance of y from x is less than epsilon but is also bigger than zero. So it has to be a positive distance away. So what's the only difference? Well on a number line there's the x, there's the x plus epsilon, there's the x minus epsilon. We still go that far left, we go that far right, but we do not include the number x because x is not a positive distance away from x. It's zero away from x. So we'd have to put an interval like that and an interval like that. So notice that the only difference between the deleted neighborhood and the actual neighborhood is that the neighborhood contains all of these points including x and the deleted neighborhood takes all these points but jumps over the value x and misses the value of x. So that means that the neighborhood, the deleted neighborhood, n star x epsilon is really just the actual neighborhood but subtracted by the singleton x because that one point has been removed. Okay, Now if we let s be a subset of r we say that x is an interior point of s if there's a neighborhood of x with the neighborhood completely contained inside of the set s. So again on a number line if we said that s was something like, let me do s in green here, so s might be, let's just do a fairly simple set. There we go, open interval. And we want to say that a point is in the interior, so let me just choose a point right there. I'll say this point right here because that one's in the interior. That point is inside of the interior because notice that I can make a neighborhood around it. So this would be my n that is completely contained within S. So we can see that we're getting this neighborhood N that is contained in the set S. So notice that it is interior, it makes sense, it's kind of inside of the interval. On the other hand, if S is a subset of R, we say that X is called a boundary point, a boundary point if for every single neighborhood of x, we always have that any neighborhood intersects the set non-empty and it intersects the complement non-empty. So on a number line, that would look like we have some kind of set S again. Let me draw it in green, like that, some kind of open interval. The points that are going to end up being boundary points are going to be like this value right here that's on the border because notice that no matter what interval I make around that point, it will always contain some stuff that is in R minus S, and it always includes some stuff that's actually inside of S. So both the complement and the set itself, both of these end up intersecting the actual neighborhood. And that's true for any neighborhood, no matter how small I make it. So notice that these inequalities hold, because bo in both cases we have a non-empty intersection with, uh, well, in one case we have it with the set S, and in the other we have it with the complement.